Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Our top story is a news update today. Mazaroni prisoner escapee still on the run escaped from the prison's farm. President pardons five females from New Opportunity Corps. GRA still has corrupt elements inside. And there is no shakeup in the Guyana police force. Now for the news in details. The Caribbean Secretariat had organized a response mechanism before Hurricane Irma battered the Caribbean islands with its strong winds and torrential rains. The powerful storm has left more than a dozen people dead and billions of dollars in damages. Nickel John Duke with the details. Assistant Secretary General of CARICOM, Douglas Slater, during an interview said, prior to Hurricane Irma unleashing its strong winds and torrential rains on the Caribbean, CARICOM had been working to address the situation. He noted that the CARICOM Secretariat has collaborated with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency to address the impact and damages of the aftermath. Our Secretary General actually had a tour of the, um, the countries affected and uh, so we are working together with regional governments, international development partners and organizations to do the best we can, to do the best we can to alleviate the, the suffering of our citizens. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency on its website says, Hurricane Irma, the ninth named hurricane of the 2017 hurricane season, became a Category 5 hurricane in the Eastern Atlantic Ocean on Tuesday, September 5, with maximum sustained winds near 185 miles per hour. Irma, a powerful Category 5 blast the states of Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Martin, St. Barthelme, British Virgin Islands, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Montserrat over Tuesday night into Wednesday evening, September 6. The hurricane continued its destructive path and impacted Turks and Caicos Islands and the northern border of Haiti. And then on Friday, September 7, the southeastern islands of the Bahamas were impacted. The hurricane has left 25 persons dead in the Caribbean, according to the New York Times. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Alliance for Change restates that the party will not support a parking meter project in its current form. The party's leadership highlights that its councillors of Georgetown voted against the renegotiation of the contract. Yannis Abrams filed this report. The chairman of the Alliance for Change, AFC, Kemra Dramjatan, at the party's media conference restated their disapproval of the parking meter contract in its current form. The party's councillors voted against the motion to pursue a renegotiated contract, and the party unequivocally supports this position and maintains that the mayor and city council is best advised to pursue a path which allows for wide consultation on the issue of parking in Georgetown and whatever decisions are taken subsequently benefits from transparent the system of implementation. 13 out of 25 councillors voted for the renegotiating of the park and meter contract with Smart City Solution. The AFC councillors were among the 12 that voted against its renegotiation. The park and meter system was introduced to Georgetown in January of this year but due to numerous protests by stakeholders, the central government suspended the project for three months. This was later extended. City Hall will be renegotiating the contract with Smart City Solutions after the decision was made democratically. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. President David Granger has pardoned five female inmates of the New Opportunity Corps. This release will be effective on September 15. Find it more in this report. Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali has announced that five females from the New Opportunity Corps will be released on September 15, 2017. Minister Ali said the decision was taken by President David Granger. The five females are between the ages of 13 and 16. Minister Ali encouraged them to keep on the right path. The young ladies in turn thanked Minister Ali and asked her to convey their appreciation to the head of state. On Wednesday, September 13, Minister Ali visited the New Opportunity Corps and met with the staffers. In light of the recent escape at the institution, where 11 juveniles eluded the authorities, the need to heighten security was addressed. 
Efforts are being made to rectify those breaches in the shortest possible time. Structural improvements to the facility was another matter which was highlighted with construction and renovations to commence before the end of 2017. Staff members present at the meeting indicated that the implementation of additional staff would alleviate the challenges which the NOC presently faces. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. You hungry? Yeah. No, no. I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. And like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> Still with news update, welcome back. 15 lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender activists were charged to become potential champions of change in confronting challenges at the inaugural LGBT Leadership Academy. Here's more. The LGBT Leadership Academy has been launched to strengthen LGBT leadership in the Caribbean by conducting two tailored training in Guyana and Suriname. The Academy will see 15 LGBT activists from six Caribbean territories trained to strengthen and sustain leadership in their home countries. Assistant Secretary General for Human and Social Development, CARICOM, Douglas Slater, charged the activists to remain optimistic. He said this trait is necessary as there is always prejudice against the LGBT community. Slater also urged them to practice teamwork to sustain leadership to effect the necessary changes desired. In order to get change, we have to be diligent, we have to work very hard and confront many challenges and I can't reiterate more the challenges that organizations like yours have. Noting that leadership will strengthen human rights in the Caribbean, Managing Director of Sasa Joel Simpson said more voices are required to boost LGBT rights. And I hope that this academy inspires you to, after leaving here, to recognize that I need to go back home and think who else within my organization needs to be similarly capacitated and what can I share and do. 
While corruption is still present at the Guyana Revenue Authority during the last 13 months, there has been more corrupt officers disciplined than previous recorded for any previous period. This is according to the authority. The GRA indicated, while it is public knowledge that the organization is shrouded in the veil of corruption, the new Commissioner General Godfrey Stacia, from the moment he took up office, has made noticeable changes aimed at ensuring the stench of corruption is substantially minimized while improving the efficiency of the Guyana Revenue Authority. The authority was at the time responding to a Kytro News article. The statement said it would be ludicrous for anyone to assume that a culture that was created and festered for decades could be eradicated overnight. However, the GRA affirms that during the last 13 months, more corrupt officers were disciplined than in any previous period. As recent as August 2017, several Guyana Revenue Authority Law Enforcement and Investigation Division officers were sent home as a result of corruption allegations. As the work to cleanse the authority from the inside out of corruption continues, the Guyana Revenue Authority encourages all stakeholders and members of the public to do their part in pointing out any form of corruption involving its officials. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A breakdown in the supervision of prisoners at the Mazaruni prison farm has resulted in the escape of an inmate. The escapee is being pursued by a search party after he went missing on Wednesday, September 13. Nicole John with this report. The Guyana police force has been called in to recapture Vijay Sanchara, who escaped from the Mazaruni prison farm. Acting Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels said, based on intelligence, Sanchara was given a drop by a tractor driver, which indicate that he is heading back home. Samuels stated, the escapee hails from the Essequibo coast. The prison's director has asked the police to investigate the reason why the prisoners were not adequately supervised, resulting in the escape. He pointed out that there may have been a breakdown in the supervision along the way. 31-year-old Vijay Sanchara remains on the run up to press time. He was incarcerated for wounding with intent and is serving a seven-year jail term. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Thanks, Nikhil. Coming up, CHNP investigating two staff accused of fraud and Public Infrastructure Ministry in need of more staff. Yes, it's our biggest reduction sale on just for you. Celebrating our third anniversary this month at our Regent Street location. Check us out for our 2017 new designs and a wide selection of quality furniture readily available or made to order. Also, for your grocery, beverage, and stationary needs, check out our supermarket. We cater for that. And be sure to visit our hardware department as well. Prices are unbeatable. Shemakia Woodworking, Inc. Call us at 231-6020 or 276-3071. Live healthier. Cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club. America's largest wholesale distributors. Same nutrition value as Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six-pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments, located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. We are the experts when it comes to creative marketing, brand campaigns, concept development, and production. With our diverse knowledge and tactical marketing strategies, we are the go-to company to reignite your brand. Having been in the industry for over 20 years, we're Ghana's number one choice for brand development.
voice of the Central Housing and Planning Authority accused of unlawfully collecting monies from potential house lot owners are currently being investigated. Here's Yanis Abrams. The Chief Executive Officer of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Lilon Saul, said that investigations are ongoing into the alleged Region 2 house lot fraud. The CEO said that two employees are under investigations after allegations surfaced that they were unlawfully collecting monies from persons in Region 2. It is alleged that um, fraud was committed at the Regional Housing Office. So that matter is being in dealt with, it's being dealt with by the police. The Regional Housing Officer Omesh Sasnarayan and Deputy Regional Housing Officer Safia Razak are both under investigation after reports of collecting money from potential house lot owners and issuing them with bogus receipts were exposed. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure is in need of more staff as the works being executed are tremendous. This is a sentiment of the Minister within the Ministry, Annette Ferguson. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure has been executing a tremendous amount of work across the country. However, the Ministry's staff is stretched to facilitate the demand for emergency infrastructural work, according to the Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson. Despite us having, you know, you know, you know, might be, you know, um, we can do with more staff. You know, we can do with more staff, but with what we currently have, you know, if the requests come, we try our best to give the necessary assistance. According to the minister, a high number of requests are oftentimes asked of the ministry even though it does not fall under the ministry's remit. On the other hand, Ferguson said works are expected to commence soon on the Timeri roundabout. The reports which say that Wendell Blanham has been kicked out of the Criminal Investigation Department and was replaced by Senior Superintendent Ravindra Dutt Woodram is false. The Guyana Police Force has seen the articles leaving them as mischievous. The Guyana Police Force says that the crime chief Wendell Blanham was not kicked out of the Criminal Investigation Department as reported on social media. The force in a statement said that Detective Blanham, who had previously requested a short period of annual vacation leave, was afforded such since it was well deserved. The force noted that Detective Superintendent Ravindra Dat Budram was temporarily placed as crime chief since Detective Superintendent Joel David was on a special assignment. However, Budram's assignment has come to an end and Assistant Commissioner Paul Williams is now the crime chief acting until Detective Blanham returns. Senior officers will have to resume duty in time for the commencement of the police's Christmas period, a period where the intensification of operational and preventative law enforcement strategies are paramount. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. More news still ahead, stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Heritage Impressions, we are the experts when it comes to creative marketing, brand campaigns, concept development and production. With our diverse knowledge and tactical marketing strategies, we are the go-to company to reignite your brand. Having been in the industry for over 20 years, we're Ghana's number one choice for brand development.
Gafus has been Guyana's largest manufacturer of steel products since 1970, and we were the first to introduce Alu Zinc and pre-painted corrugated sheets, which are produced in several widths and gauges and can be cut to any desired length. They're available in ripple, non-ripple, clay tile, non-clay tile, and trapezoidal designs. We supplement our corrugated sheets with curve sheets and ridging in Alu Zinc and pre-painted finishes. Also galvanized deckings for casting concrete floors, manufactured in several thicknesses and can be cut to any length from 6 feet to 30 feet. Some of the other products produced by us are galvanized purlins in widths of 4, 6 and 8 inches and to lengths 6 feet to 40 feet. BRC fabric in sheets 6.35 mm, sizes 20 feet by 8 feet, suitable for heavy concrete flooring or areas of heavy traffic. At Gafus, we produce the best quality at the most competitive prices and also offer the best services in the hardware business. All our steel products are available at any of our seven locations countrywide. Gafus, the name you can trust. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Here's still with news update, welcome back. The Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson, reassures that the Guyana Maritime Department will ensure persons travelling between the Freeding Hoop and Jurchin Wharves are safe. The Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson, said that the Guyana Maritime Department, MARAD, within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure is looking at the safety on the waterway. As both the Vreden Hoop and Georgetown Wharfs are not safe, Minister Ferguson said that they have been working 24-7 to address all safety lapses. The minister added that the department has established a plan for the safety of persons. I would safely say that between now and, and, and January of next year, you know, the, the department do have a plan or program in place to address all safety needs. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure in January 2018 will begin reconstruction of the Starbrook Wharf. The project is expected to last 12 to 18 months. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. A total of 45 residents of Region 5, inclusive of staff of the Hugo Chavez Rehabilitation and Reintegration Center, were trained in effective production and management of aquaculture. Chief Fisheries Officer, Fisheries Department Denzel Roberts, charged participants to ensure continuity in the project. The Fisheries Department has over the years been providing training to fish farmers countrywide to ensure sustainability of the industry. Last year, the Yoga Chavez Center constructed two ponds and a compound with the aim of supplying a protein-rich diet to its occupants. The Fisheries Department has so far donated 3,000 fingerlings. With cancer being at the forefront of the Guyana Cancer Foundation Butler, the committee is looking at the government for support in fighting against an uncommunicable disease. The committee has been receiving funding from private donors to assist persons with breast and cervical cancers. This is according to President of the Guyana Cancer Foundation, Bibi Hassan. According to Hassan, the committee is playing a part on the Ministry of Public Health Steering Committee, UN Papaloma Virus Campaign. The campaign, which will kick off in October, will see 36,000 girls between ages 9 and 13 being vaccinated countrywide. Sitting on board is as to assist them in sensitizing the public going out, um, make, make the people aware of this vaccine and how important it is for their children to get vaccinated for early detection. Hassan said over a hundred women who are underserved and uninsured were given free breast cancer screening this year. In addition to this, about 600 women have been able to access free screening for cervical cancer. So I, I'm offering uh, some, some free pap smear, but it all depends on if the government will assist me in getting those sites read. The Cancer Fighting Committee will also be looking to target prostate cancer next. The oncology unit revealed 46 cancer-related deaths were recorded in 2015, while 125 cases of breast cancer have been diagnosed with four being males. This follows cervical cancer with 47 diagnoses and ovarian with 26 all in the same year. 
Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as the Ghana Stock Exchange. On Sunday, September 17, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of Section C, Turkan and Cummins Park, Section C, Cummins Lodge, to a public consultation at the Washbit Tamar and Cummins Park Multipurpose Building, respectively. The consultation will address the reformulation of the Road Network Upgrade and Expansion Program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank and entails road upgrades, street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings and subsidies for construction of core homes and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours at both locations. You hungry? Yeah. No, no, I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika. That and many more, all in convenient size piles. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Anibina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 738. Let's turn our attention to the Denmark Harbour Bridge schedule. What do people say on this week's hot topic is next with Rajesh Lakan. Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. 
But BB, your house don't even have windows. Hey, hey girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got windows? Yes, I know it ain't got windows. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind your business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. On Sunday, September 17, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of Section C, Turkan and Cummins Park, Section C, Cummins Lodge, to a public consultation at the Washby Tamar and Cummins Park Multipurpose Building, respectively. The consultation will address the reformulation of the Road Network Upgrade and Expansion Program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank and entails road upgrades, street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings and subsidies for construction of core homes and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours at both locations. This week edition of What the People Say, Guyanese shared their views on government commitment to assist Caribbean territories that were affected by Hurricane Irma in the amount of 50,000 US dollars. Well, I think it's a good thing. We gotta help others. Are we hoping that when we're in problem, people help us as well? Well, then these are our neighbors, so we gotta support people because it's a national disaster. I could never tell them it could be our time. You understand? And we'll be part of CARICOM, so we gotta support them. I think um, they should, you know, uh, send out um, a team that can assess the situation better and can bring Guyanese, you know, see, you know, what are the the most, uh, you know, serious problem that they can be able to assist them going there on the spot. I, I think the government can afford it also, get a team, send them out. I mean, we're talking about Guyanese here. We're not talking about foreigners alone. We're talking about helping out our own people. And I think that they should really do something serious about it. Well, I think it's something really helpful towards our um, community as well as our other countries because whenever done, when it's helpful for us to get back and gain as well from them because in the long run, we're all the community and they're all Caribbean citizens and it's good that we help helping them as well. Right. Are we think about the amount, the 50,000 US dollars, which is well, equivalent to 10 million Ghana dollars? Yeah, well, that, that's a hefty amount. It's in the position we are. But like they're telling people, you're getting oil, so maybe <laughs> that might be an, a little drop in the ocean compared. No, I think it should be more, man, more. I mean, it, it, it's going towards the hurricane, in the disaster in the country, right? I think that's too little bit, man. But you think our country can afford more at this time? Yeah, I think so. We remember we got the oil money, bros. We got an oil, so we got to use the money, utilize it. We got help. We got there for one another. Right? Yeah, we give what we get. When you're giving something, you give from your heart, it's not the amount. You understand? 50,000 US, I think, is an, um, it's inadequate because uh, I mean, a lot of Guyanese living on the islands out there, uh, it should have been a little more. It should have been at least 200,000 should have been you know, given to these people out there because a lot of Guyanese, thousands of Guyanese living out there, and they're, they're, they're suffering the worst. So I, 50,000 US is, is very much inadequate. I think the government have a lot more money that they could have been able to put at least to help out our people, Guyanese specifically. So I think that they should have given some more money. I think it's uh, adequate amount, yes, sorry. For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Lakan. 
That sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Masaruni prisoner escapee still on the run, escaped from the prison's farm. President pardons five females from New Opportunity Corps. GRA still has corrupt elements inside, and there was no shakeup in the Guyana police force. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be broadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Friday, September 15. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramotar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.